The breaking news of the night is that the Justice Department is telling Robert Mueller that he is not allowed to answer the questions that Democrats plan to ask him on Monday, especially the question, if Donald Trump were not the president of the United States, would you have charged him with obstruction of justice? Tonight, in a letter to Robert Mueller signed by an associate deputy attorney general, the Justice Department is telling Robert Mueller that he may not make, quote, any comment on the facts developed and legal conclusions by the special counsel's office with respect to uncharged individuals. Donald Trump is an uncharged individual. The letter also says that Robert Mueller should not testify about the, quote, deliberative process, including any discussions that he and his staff had about, quote, investigative steps or decisions made during your investigation. That means, according to the Justice Department anyway, that Robert Mueller cannot answer the most important questions he will face on Wednesday, including questions like, why didn't you subpoena President Trump to testify to the grand jury? It means Robert Mueller will not be able to answer the question, were you or anyone on your team concerned that President Trump would fire you? That's a question about Robert Mueller's deliberative process. And the Justice Department tonight is saying that he cannot answer questions like that. With Robert Mueller now scheduled to begin his testimony to the House Judiciary Committee at 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday, Jerry Nadler is now only the third chairman of the House Judiciary Committee in our lifetimes who has ever had to answer a question like this question. Do you believe the president is guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors, the marker for impeachment by the House? I think there is very substantial, well, the report presents very substantial evidence that the president is guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors, and we have to present, the, or let Mueller present those facts to the American people, and then see where we go from there, because the administration must be held accountable, and no president can be, can be above the law. Okay, here's how extraordinary that statement is. When the chairman of the House Judi Judiciary Committee, with jurisdiction over impeachments, says there's very substantial evidence that the president is guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors. That means that has always meant that the president is going to be or is currently being impeached. Or that's what it has always meant until now. And that's why no chairman of the House Judiciary Committee has ever said anything like that without then actually voting to impeach the president of the United States. Here is what the Democratic chairman, Peter Rodino, said when he began the impeachment hearings against President Richard Nixon. There have been serious allegations by people of good faith and sound intelligence that the president, Richard M. Nixon, has committed grave and systematic violations of the Constitution. Impeachment resolutions were introduced by members of the House and referred to our committee by the Speaker. On February 6th, the House of Representatives, by a vote of 410 to 4, authorized and directed the Committee on the Judiciary to investigate whether sufficient grounds exist to impeach Richard M. Nixon, President of the United States. That was as rhetorically as far as the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee was willing to go when he was beginning impeachment hearings of President Nixon. Jerry Nadler has already gone far beyond that. And the House hasn't even decided to have impeachment hearings. Chairman Nadler seems to be regarding Wednesday's Judiciary Committee hearing with Robert Mueller as the only witness as a preliminary hearing on the way to impeachment hearings. I believe that when people hear what was in the Mueller report, then we'll, we'll be able, we'll be in a position to begin holding the president accountable and to make this uh, less of a lawless administration. We have never seen a situation where the president, uh, the White House, uh, stonewalls Congress on subpoenas. That was Article Three of the Nixon uh, uh, impeachment that they. Uh, uh, stonewall subpoenas. Here the president has set out right out loud that he's stonewalling all subpoenas, which they are doing, and that's an invasion of the of the separation of powers, and it's a, and a core function of the of the duty of Congress to hold the administration accountable to the American people. 
After Robert Mueller testifies to the House Judiciary Committee on Wednesday, he will testify to the House Intelligence Committee, chaired by Congressman Adam Schiff. Most Americans, you know, in their busy lives haven't had the opportunity to read that report, and it's a pretty dry prosecutorial work product. Uh, we want Bob Mueller to bring it to life. Who better to bring them to life than the man who did the investigation himself? We want the people to hear it directly from him, not filtered through Bill Barr, who had his own misleading characterization of it, but from the man who did the work himself. As might be obvious to most viewers, the typical preparation that committee members engage in as a team for a typical hearing is absolutely nothing. In a typical congressional hearing, there is usually zero coordination among the members of the committee. The members prepare alone with their staff, of course. Not this time. CNN.com is reporting that the Republicans in the House Judiciary Committee actually held a mock Mueller hearing last week. If that has ever happened before, in the history of congressional hearings, I, for one, am unaware of it. In my years as chief of staff of two Senate committees, I never heard of such a thing. Now that the Democrats have discovered that the Republicans have already had a mock Mueller hearing, the Democrats reportedly plan to hold a two-hour mock Mueller hearing tomorrow. And we are fortunate tonight to be joined by someone who will be at that mock hearing tomorrow and the real hearing on Wednesday. Leading off our discussion is Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Mukasel. Powell of Florida. She is a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Also joining us is Yamish Alcindor, White House correspondent for the PBS NewsHour and an MSNBC political analyst. And Leonard Pitts Jr., Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for the Miami Herald, is with us tonight. Uh, Congresswoman, uh, I've never heard of this kind of rehearsal before. It, it, are, are your fellow committee members telling you that this is the first time they've ever done this? Um they haven't, but let me just say that we didn't decide to get ready tomorrow because the Republicans held a mock uh, hearing. We had already had discussions about doing that. We have one opportunity inviting special counsel Mueller, and we have to be prepared. We have to be strategic. And like you said, usually we prepare on our own. We can't be asking the same questions. Um, so I'm actually looking forward to that tomorrow. And what, what are the rules of the hearing as you understand it? Is it possible that Perhaps not every member of the Judiciary Committee will get to ask questions. I believe we're all going to be asking questions. We will make sure that everybody has enough time. Um, we've been talking to the chairman about that, and I think we'll all have an opportunity to question the special counsel. What we're hearing from Jerry Nadler sounds like he supports impeachment and is treating this hearing as a preliminary procedure to getting to impeachment. Um, without formally calling it an inquiry, I think what we're doing is taking this investigation very seriously. Like uh, most of the Congress members that have spoken about the Mueller report have said, most Americans don't have the time to read a 448-page report. Uh, we have found substantial evidence that shows us that the president obstructed justice. And I think that it is critical for the American public to understand that. And that is why this hearing is going to be very important on Wednesday. Um, having said that, we will follow uh, the steps that we need to, and, and we'll make that decision after the Do hearing. Do you support impeachment proceedings? I came out to support an impeachment inquiry mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. Now, I was born in Ecuador. I'm, I'm an immigrant. And I took an oath when I became a citizen. I took the same oath on January 3rd when I was uh, elected to represent my community. And it's to defend and protect the Constitution against all foreign and domestic enemies. And after seeing the continued obstruction by this president, not allowing us to question fact witnesses, very important witnesses like White House counsel Don McGahn, former White House counsel Don McGahn, and then having different hearings, listening from experts and prosecutors, I realized that my duty was to protect our country, our democracy. I understand what it is to live under a dictatorship in Latin America. I understand and recognize the elements of someone that has grabbed on, onto power, that has corruption in his government. And I am extremely worried that people don't understand what could happen if we allow this president to get away with corruption, obstructive acts, and all, all the high crimes and misdemeanors that we have in the Mueller report. Uh, Leonard Pitts, the uh, news of the night, the Justice Department throwing basically roadblocks in front of the committee saying uh, that uh, Robert Mueller cannot testify about any deliberations 
And that could that means if there was a discussion among Robert Mueller and his associates about the possibility of the president firing them all and strategic decisions they might have made because of that, they Robert Mueller is not allowed to testify to that, according to the Justice Department. Not clear if Mueller has to follow that. Well, as has become sadly clear in recent days, uh, in many important ways, the United States no longer has a Justice Department. Donald Trump has a very large personal law firm. Uh, on the on the mall in Washington, and I think that that uh, that's sort of uh, in, uh, emblematic of where we are as as a nation. We've seen institution after institution subverted, um, you know, institutions that are supposed to serve the needs of we the people. We've seen institution after institution subverted to the personal needs, uh, personal narcissism, and personal ego of this one man. So. The Justice Department becomes just one one more to bite the dust. Uh, Yamish, one of the things that's striking about the letter to uh, Robert Mueller is that it comes at a pretty low level in the Justice Department to go to Robert Mueller, an assistant deputy Inter attorney general, uh, but telling him uh, you, you literally, in every sense, cannot say a word that does not already appear in the Mueller report. You can't talk about, uh, for example, why you can't say anything more on the question of why didn't you subpoena President Trump, because that's a deliberation. That's a decision. He's not allowed to explain any decision like that. Two of the biggest questions that I've heard from Democrats that they want to answer is why didn't you force Donald Trump to sit for an interview and you yourself talk to him and ask specific questions? And the second one is how did you not make a decision on obstruction of justice? How did you decide that you were going to punt that and where did you want that to go? Did you want that to go to Congress as it seems in the report or did, or is Bill Barr right and you were punting that to the, 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 the attorney general? So I think the DOJ is understanding that that's the two biggest questions and they don't want him to answer that. Now, I should say I had a pretty long conversation with the spokesperson for Robert Mueller, and he told me that Robert Mueller wants to stay within the four, the quote, four walls of the report, and that Robert Mueller doesn't want to go any farther than that. He said, look at his press conference that was about 10 minutes long with no questions to see an example of what he wants to bring to the House. Um, that said, I've talked to some Democrats who say they're going to try to go beyond the report because the American people have questions and they want to get those answers from him. But this is the DOJ, in, 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 in effect, um, officially telling Robert Mueller, look, you can't answer all the questions that we want to know. Uh, one of my favorite questions, if not my favorite question, is why didn't you uh, subpoena for testimony President Trump? Now, the Mueller report addresses this and addresses it directly and then on a footnote later in the report. And, it, and basically they say they were concerned about the costs of potentially lengthy constitutional litigation with resulting delay in finishing our investigation. There was no time limit on this investigation. I don't understand what the delay is that they're talking about, what the, what the time pressure is they were talking about. There's nothing in the report that explain, explains time pressure. Lawrence, it's very clear to me, having dealt with some of uh, the council representing the administration and the executive branch, that the reason why the president was not forced to testify in front of Mueller is because they didn't allow him to. The, the council representing the executive must have told, or Attorney General Barr must have told Mueller, you're not going to get the president to testify. I mean, yeah, I, but Mueller did not issue a subpoena, which he could have done. And that was his decision. And that is not explained in the Mueller report. That is true. Um, what I can say is that we have enough in the Mueller report. I, I know that people have a lot of questions outside of that, but we have 448 pages that outlines volume one, the Russia interference, 200 contacts with the Trump campaign, uh, and also volume two, outlining the 10 different instances of obstruction of justice. So personally, I think that if we can get that information out on Wednesday, that is all we need. We don't need to go further than that. So um, I'm confident right. that we will be able to do that. And Democrats have essentially been telling me no one reads the book, but they watch the movie. So the idea is that they want Robert Mueller to just be out there in the public talking on television. So people who maybe have said, OK, that that part is over. Bill Barr kind of set the narrative and everyone thinks President Trump is exonerated. They can listen to Robert Mueller's own words and be moved in some way. That's what Democrats hopes are. Um, it is though very, I think, and it's, it's Robert Mueller is going to be in an interesting place because there are going to be these questions that go outside of those um, that are going to be questions that normal people want to know. People that I've talked to around the country, especially Democrats who are frustrated by Robert Mueller's decision not to make a decision on obstruction of justice, they want to know why didn't she make those things. So I think it's going to be an interesting thing whether or not 
if he doesn't go any farther than the report, if that's enough for people that are frustrated by it? Well, it, one of the big questions is intent on obstruction of justice, and did the president intend to obstruct justice? The Mueller report says that they know the answer to that question, but they won't tell us, because it appears in this footnote where, they, where Mueller's talking about not subpoenaing Donald Trump, and he says, we had obtained from other sources, uh, other sources allowed us to draw relevant factual conclusions on intent. So Mueller has a conclusion on the president's intent, but he did not put that in writing. And now, apparently, the Justice Department is saying, you can't tell us the answer to that question. Since when is ignorance an excuse? <laughs> you know, maybe I'm missing something. I don't have a law degree or anything. But since when is ignorance of the law uh, an excuse? That's, that's one thing. The other thing is, with all due respect to the Mueller report and, and, and the things that are brought forward there, we, we've seen the president obstruct justice in real time before our very eyes. If you don't have the, the Mueller report, you have the Lester Holt interview, mm -hmm. which to me is a pretty clear cut. And again, I'm not a lawyer here, nor do I play one on TV. But it seemed to me a pretty clear case of I did this because he was getting too close to I fired James Comey because he was getting too close to things I didn't want him to get close to. What more do we need? And, and the Lester Holt video is quoted in the Mueller report, and it is, it is one of those things that Robert Mueller is referring to when he says, uh, we had other sources, uh, but he specifically uses the word intent in the report, and he never reveals uh, what that intent is in the report, one of the many areas. Justice Department says you can't ask him about. We're going to have to take a break now. Congresswoman Debbie Mukarsel. It's Mucarsel. okay, everyone. everyone Debbie Mukarsel Powell. <laughs> we met in Florida when you yes, were running for your right. campaign. This is the first time we've seen each other since. That's it is right. great to see you here in Washington. Uh, Yamish Alcindor, Leonard Pitts, thank you both. Thank you all for joining us, starting us off tonight. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.